channel. Thanks for watching. What I'm going to do today is compare this Agile. This is an AL2000. And I'm going to compare it with the Dillion Les Paul copy that's on the wall. Now this would have come out in the early 2000s, so it's not a current model. Spec may have changed. Keep that in mind. And uh, same with the Dillion. I believe it's an early 2000s model, but I can't check. There is no uh, serial number on the Dillion. But they're very similar. Both made in Korea. Both a pretty accurate Les Paul standard copy. I've already compared the Agile to the Gibson USA you see hanging on the wall above the Dillion. And the Agile fared really well. I was impressed and I would choose the Agile to play over the Gibson. So that's saying a lot. Uh, the Gibson costs 10 times as much. But let's see how it does against a guitar in its own price point. I think it'll be probably even more interesting. Okay, so let's just get to it. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started with the Agile. Uh, we see the headstock has its own unique little wave design. Kind of cool, not symmetrical, but looks okay. And the Agile logo appears to be painted as opposed to Mother of Pearl. Hard to tell, looks pretty good. And there's a single screw truss rod cover that just says 2000. Let's check out the Dillion. Okay, there's the Dillion. And we see it is a symmetrical headstock. It looks more or less like the Gibson. It doesn't have the little divot right in the middle. The Dillion logo looks to be Mother of Pearl, as is this thing in the middle. Now it's probably fake Mother of Pearl, but it looks pretty good. It's a three screw truss rod cover, and it just looks a little more finished than the Agile for some reason. I'd say aesthetically, the Dillion is winning already. Now let's take a look at the back. We see it's a solid mahogany neck with a scarf joint and they're using Klusen Deluxe style tuners. These are my favorite style tuners. In my last review of this guitar, I noted the tuners felt a little cheap and needed some lube. I've since lubed them, and I'm happy to say they feel great now, as good as any Klusens I've felt. So that's good news. Let's take a look at the Agile. Okay, there's the Agile, and we see they're using Grover tuners, and this is a maple neck. Now it is a scarf joint right in here, so it's two pieces forming the neck. But it feels great, and Grover tuners are really good. I wouldn't say the Klusens are better or worse, just a little different. And I notice right away the neck carve on this one feels a little deeper. It's not a full uh, 50s style, but somewhere in between a 60s and a 50s. Really comfortable C carve. Now, we may as well check out the binding and the fretwork on the Agile. It feels as good as any Les Paul I've ever played, and that's saying a lot. Their fretwork is just top-notch. Now, this is an inexpensive guitar, so that's surprising. Let's check out the Dillion. Okay, here's the Dillion, and it does not feel just quite as good. It is definitely in the ballpark, uh, but there's ever so slightest uh, little feeling of the fret ends there as we slide our fingers. I would never complain about this guitar, but in comparison, the Agile gets the point. Now let's take a look at the Rosewood fingerboard. This is one of the nicest Rosewood fingerboards I've seen on the Dillion, and it has fake Mother of Pearl trapezoid inlays. Let's check out the Agile. Okay, there is the Agile, and it doesn't look quite as good. Now I have to admit, I have oiled the Dillion, and I have not oiled the Agile. So that's one thing that could make a difference. That might bring this right back to looking just as nice, but we have to compare them as they are. There's a look at the top position markers. All in all, the Agile, the neck, just feels better. The fret work, and I'm not sure what it is, but something about it feels better. So that's a point for sure to the Agile. 
Now let's take a look at the neck joint. We see the heel is two pieces of maple, as we would expect because there's a scarf joint. Usually that will be a two-piece heel, and it butts into this mahogany body. Now it's well done, feels great, uh, but I will say cosmetically there's issues like this. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's an area there that looks like a blemish, possibly wood filler or the stain just didn't take, but that's fairly common on this guitar. We see it here, there's obviously filler, and that would not happen on a Les Paul, nor does it happen on the Dillion. So let's check that out. Okay, there's the Dillion, and we see mahogany neck, and this is a two-piece heel, but it butts into this fantastic looking mahogany body. And it's a drastic difference. This looks as nice as any Gibson I've seen, whereas the Agile was clearly not selected for the wood appearance. It may be just as good tone-wise, but aesthetically, the Dillion is smashing it. Here's another area where the Dillion sort of wins. You see the horn on the cutaway. This looks more or less exactly like a Gibson. Really well done. And there's the maple cap in there. Let's check out the Agile. Okay, so there's the Agile for comparison. And you see the horn doesn't come up just quite as much. Now, aesthetically, I don't mind this look at all. It suits the body. It doesn't look off. Sometimes they go straight across on other guitars. But this, to me, looks really good. But it is not as close to a Gibson as the Dillion. So we're giving another point to the Dillion. And I think you'll notice there's a theme going on here. The Dillion is winning the aesthetics battle and the Agile is winning the playability battle. And that's something you're gonna hear repeated throughout uh, this review. So let's take a look at the top and see if that holds true. Sure enough, this is not a AAA flamed maple top. There is lots of inconsistency, unique grain patterns, etc. Let's check out the Dillion. And there's the Dillion. And we see definitely aesthetically it is a better top, uh, depending on, of course, your preference. Now, I like the Agile style. I like imperfections. But if you're looking for aesthetic perfection, the Dillion is going to get you much closer. This is as nice a top as I've seen on a Gibson, although this is likely a veneer. I cannot tell. It has those nice, I guess they're called mineral lines that run this way and then the flames on top give it a really cool look. Speaking of wood, check out the back on this guitar. There's probably multiple pieces, but it doesn't jump out at you. And it is what I would expect mahogany to look like. Let's check out the Agile. Okay, there's the Agile. Now I believe it is mahogany, but it certainly has a different visual appearance to the Dillion and to the Gibsons I've seen. Who knows, this could be a different species of mahogany, but the grain doesn't look as pronounced. And there's all these sort of color inconsistencies. It looks like someone drove on it there. It's clearly multiple pieces. And they're not trying to hide it, which doesn't bother me, but it's worth note. And we have to give Dillion another point. So Dillion's definitely winning uh, cosmetically. If they were guitars that we just looked at, uh, the Dillion wins hands down. Now let's look at the hardware. This is really good looking hardware. It looks at least as good as Epiphone. Let's check out the Dillion. Okay, so there's the Dillion and it looks really good too. I would say they're about par. There's two humbucker pickups and I'm not sure uh, what pickups the Dillion is using. The Agile has their own ceramic pickups. And let's look at the switch. That switch feels great. Very little play, if any, and nice solid contact. Let's check out the Agile. Okay, so here's the Agile. I notice it's missing the switch tip. 
not a big deal. They just screw on. But it's the best switch I have ever felt on a Les Paul. It feels rock solid. Not to mention I love their poker chip. It just looks really classy. So we're going to give a point to the Agile there. Not that we're keeping score. Now take a look at the pick guard. On the Agile, it is full thickness with a bevel cut. It's not the best cut. You can see little marks around the edge. But let's check out the Dillion. Okay, here's the Dillion. And we see it's actually a bit thinner than normal. It doesn't have a bevel cut, uh, but it looks smooth. It looks pretty good. I would say the Agile gets a point for plastics. The knobs, they feel about the same. They're not too loose but not a ton of drag, and they feel decent. So there we have it for a visual inspection. I think it's important to note a few things. The Dillion, obviously, uh, better wood selection. I really like the aesthetics of this guitar. <clears throat> the Agile, however, feels more individual. It seems less like a carbon copy. Definitely, they've paid so much attention to the neck on the Agile that it shows. And when you play it, it just feels exactly right to me anyway. But the Dillion plays great and it's definitely a really nice guitar. As soon as I looked at this, I was like, oh, I can't believe the woods they're using and the construction is fantastic. So there it is. They both play great. Uh, slight edge to the Agile in playability. And let's face it, playability is king. So anyway, let's take a listen and see what you think. Cheers. Thank mm -hmm. you.